I'm Alan Cummin. I'm reading from North to Benjamin, Chapter 5. Edgar has been dragged north to Dawson City by his unstable mother. They are at a house party. Edgar has just met Benjamin, a dog, and Caroline, a new friend. It didn't take much for Edgar and Caroline to leave the party, even though it was late and dark and cold outside. The adults were still singing and dancing. Edgar saw his mother in the living room on an old couch, sitting quite close to Cease, and she had a beer in her hand. When she saw Edgar with Caroline and Benjamin, she called out, Oh, Edgar, is that the dog? God, he's huge! He's a Newfoundland, Caroline said. Pretty stinky these days. We won't be long. Benjamin sniffed, sniffed in the general direction of the party, a room full of people who might pet him if he stopped long enough. Caroline pulled at his collar. Victoria was on the other side of the room talking to the tall, tall man, William, but she was looking at Edgar's mother and at Cease. Edgar glanced back at his mother, but she wasn't noticing Victoria, or she was pretending not to notice. Edgar swallowed. He couldn't think of what to say. Then Benjamin started forward after all. The road outside was slippery with ice and snow, and Benjamin walked like he was afraid to fall. They had a leash for him, though Caroline had said they would not need it much. Benjamin didn't run any more. What grade are you in? Caroline asked. Edgar kicked a chunk of ice, and it spun down the road until it hit something and broke into several pieces. You did go to school in Toronto, didn't you? she said. Benjamin farted with every step. It was good that they were outside in a lot of air. Sometimes, Edgar said. How could you only go to school sometimes? It was a complicated question. Sometimes Edgar stayed home and read books, and sometimes he and his mother were moving and didn't know how long they would be able to stay on someone's couch or in their basement, and it would have been a bother starting in a new school when they really weren't sure how long the arrangement would last. Sometimes Edgar went to school and pulled his cheeks back, and the people didn't really know he was there. What's school like here? Edgar asked. Caroline said, it's just school, probably like anywhere. Benjamin took a big poop on the road in front of a very old log cabin that Caroline said used to belong to Robert Service, a poet who got rich writing about the Klondike. But the cabin did not look like a rich man's house at all. There was still bark on the logs, and the house itself seemed tiny and dark and cold. It did have a big veranda, though. Caroline worked a plastic bag so that she could pick up the poop without getting her hand dirty. Then she tied it closed and handed it to Edgar. Edgar spied another old log cabin down the road, and Caroline said it had belonged to Jack London. Really? Edgar said. Jack London had written the story Edgar had been thinking about on the road from the airport, about the freezing man and the dog and the fire. What people say about Jack London around here, Caroline told him, is that he got stranded on an island upriver when winter came on. He holed up in a cabin, probably a lot like that one, with a whole bunch of others, and all they could do for months was tell stories. That was his gold rush. He went back to San Francisco and wrote them up. Edgar asked, and Caroline said she did know the story of the freezing man she'd read it in school. Edgar spat but it didn't crackle and freeze in mid-air. Pretty balmy tonight, actually, Caroline said, but she spat, too. The sky was a brilliant darkness above them. Caroline turned them off the street and up the hill farther into the woods, along a trail Edgar would not have noticed on his own. In just a couple of minutes it felt like they were far away from everything, were in the middle of frozen trees. Benjamin was happier with the footing, and he seemed to like stopping and sniffing. Caroline said, listen, just listen. So they stood still. Benjamin snorted and huffed, and Edgar felt he could even hear the dog's drool dripping onto the snow and freezing there slowly. 
He could hear his own breathing because he was puffing still from climbing the hill. As he listened further, he could hear the sounds of the party, the music, laughter, a song about a man riding a motorcycle. And even farther away, he could hear the sound of an engine, a car or truck coughing into life. A dog howled. Benjamin pricked up his ears. It was a lonely sound from far away. Other dogs began to bark, and the barking echoed off the hills, a chorus of dogs, some now howling. Benjamin stayed quiet, but he was listening. Dog radio, Caroline said. Who knows what they're talking about? It was cold as they stood on the trail, their breath coming out in clouds. Was this balmy? Edgar felt like his cheeks were becoming thicker, maybe even freezing, but it didn't hurt. There was no wind at all. The plastic bag in his hand, Benjamin's poop, was solidifying. He heard a clanking sound from far away, and then he could hear someone chopping wood. She was fine to just stand still, this girl, Caroline. She didn't need to be talking all the time, and neither did Benjamin. But there would be things to say. He and Benjamin and maybe even Caroline were going to be great, great friends. Finally, Caroline said, So, who's your father? More chopping in the distance, Edgar imagined a big man in a lumberjack shirt with one of those double-edged axes from old pictures. But that couldn't be right. An axe like that would have been for cutting down a tree, not splitting wood for the fire. Don't answer that if you don't want to, Caroline said finally. Lots of families here don't follow any traditional pattern, as you see from my family. She shrugged. Benjamin sniffed at Edgar's boot for a moment, then nuzzled him gently. But it was almost enough to knock Edgar back a step. He likes you, Caroline said. My father is a musician somewhere, Edgar said. I don't know him. He and my mum were just friends. She has a lot of those. Victoria's a singer, Caroline said, and my dad is a killer drummer. You should hear them together. My mother's a singer too, Edgar said, sometimes. Yeah, well, Victoria's really good, Caroline said. Yes, he could imagine it. He could imagine it all coming to a great deal of trouble. They listened some more, then they headed back down the trail.